Now, a first for the Mayor's Council of Guam. The Attorney General made an appearance during a special monthly meeting of the Council on February 15th. And at the forefront of his presentation, Moylan identified issues observed throughout the villages, the first being intoxicated immigrants and locals gathering in public spaces and being disruptive, which Moylan said is not good for raising our next generation to respect the law. I'm working with the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, as well as GPD uh, Chief, to reach out to each of you village mayors that when you see uh, like the, the coalescing of people, whether they're local or immigrants, that you do not want to see at the community centers, bus stops, whatever. You know, the, the old school was you go home at night. You know, if you want to drink, go to your wife and deal with your, your family, drink at home. But on Guam, we're starting to see these people, and I see it in the police reports, and as a defense attorney, I was being appointed to some of them. What we notice is that they're getting together, they're drinking, and then causing trouble. But just the mere fact that they're getting together drinking at your community centers, baseball fields, whatever, I'm trying to work a, a, a connection with GPD so that they will go to react to your um, concern about these people that are drinking there and then warn them there's a law against public intoxication and to clear out, go home, or they're going to get arrested and we will prosecute them at the AG's office. Mayor Savarez said alcohol-free zone signs and others are posted within her village to try to control this issue, but there are greater challenges. When we do call like the park rangers or GPD, they look at us and say, well, what do you want us to do with them? And so, of course, public intoxication is one. Uh, we also have signs in our government buildings uh, because the police had told us in the past that if we literally say, our signs say no sleeping, no loitering, no camping. They cannot stay overnight. They need to go home. And, uh, but some of them don't have homes to go mm -hmm. to. And that causes another problem, right, in the yes. village. Um, so, and then we have a homeless shelter. But, of course, they don't want to register for the homeless shelter yes. because there are rules there. And a lot of it is because they don't want to follow the rules mm -hmm. at the shelters, at any housing program that are available. And then we have mental illness issues. Correct. Mm -hmm. But then issues. in order to put them at behavioral health, the person has to commit themselves. We can't force them there. So those are challenges that mm -hmm. we all have. Moylan addressed the issue of loitering and the safety risk panhandlers pose at traffic intersections. On the one hand, we're a compassionate island. On the other hand, you kind of wonder if these guys, it's a gimmick that these guys are pulling. Uh, basically, uh, you know, taking, asking for money when they really don't need it. But the bottom line from a public safety point of view is it's going to cause an accident, people trying to avoid them, or they're going to get hurt themselves. Plus, it's trespassing because it's on government property. They need to have a properly issued license in order to do stuff like that by DPW, which they won't be able to get because that's not allowed for One. at the uh, intersections. Also discussed were homeless encampments. For those squatting on certain properties, Moylan encourages the Chamorro Land Trust Commission and property owners to file trespass complaints, which will result in their removal by police if they don't do so voluntarily. And if children are seen, that CPS be contacted. There's also the concern of homeless individuals being sent from Hawaii, the Philippines, and the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. Moylan said his team has begun to photograph and interview homeless individuals, raising the deeper issues of meth addiction, substance abuse, and mental health. So we're getting Guam Behavioral Health involved on it. They're talking about getting a bus over there to invite them to leave. You know, obviously the AG's office could do it the hard way, which is hit them all with uh, trespass complaints or public nuisance. But, you know, that's not our, our attitude that we want to take unless we're forced to take it, okay? So and it's like the, the people panhandling. They get one warning to get out of there. They come back they're going to be going seeing the judge. He shared his plans to start talking to members of the Federated States of Micronesia community, highlighting a difference in their education and its effect on behavior as compared to those from the Palauan community. Mamung Totu Maiti Mayor Rudy Paco thinks the immigration issue lies on the airport screening process. You know, we all know that Palauans, they don't have as much problems, mainly because of education. You look at their islands, they educate their people, then they migrate. FSM has a high incident that they don't have education to those people that are coming to Guam. That's why we're having, in my opinion, a lot of the problems. They're just more prone to, to be addicted to substances, not being able to get a job and so forth. According to the Compact Impact Agreement, it's education, employment, or medical. Mm -hmm. 
I, I think if they don't have the proper documents, then they shouldn't be here, even when we travel, sir. They ask us where we're going to stay. They ask us for how long. Is the immigration following up on all these people that are coming into our island? Moylan also spoke on the problem of abandoned vehicles and said he is prepared to restart a program implemented when he was first attorney general in partnership with GPD and the Department of Revenue and Taxation. When people abandon their cars, there's ways to find out who is the last owner of it. And you don't need the license plate. You guys may know it's the, uh, the engine numbers and the chassis numbers. They're registered. Um, so I, I am uh, prepared to start that program up again. The preference, though, is for the government to take the resources because, you know, the cars have value. You just need to find the proper uh, recycling company like they used to do and then take those vehicles off of Guam. But regardless, the owners of it are still responsible. And obviously the reason why they dump it is because they don't want to pay the costs uh, associated with getting rid of a car. Sinahanya Mayor and Council Vice President Robert Hoffman praised the former program. At the time, the AG's office would put a notice in the newspaper about what the laws were, and the mayor would make a copy and place it somewhere people could see. And so you were very adamant, at, and we actually took, I think, 20-some to court at the time, and the judges then told them, just move your car and, and get it out of there. But it was a huge sigh of relief because we were able to track down through your office the owners, sometimes it was sold and resold and resold, but the original owners like, I don't want anything to do with this, I'll, I'll remove it myself. So, and it turned out some of them were tour companies, some of them were all this, but it, I found it to be successful because we had that support of the Attorney General's office. In Alahan Mayor Anthony Chargloff, however, said GPD is part of the problem. They would pull over a vehicle for whatever, you know, uh, expired license plate or whatever the case may be. Uh, interestingly enough though, if, if, if as long as it's safely pulled off to the shoulder of the road, GPD will remove the license plates and just leave it there. And what I'm getting or what the response I'm getting is that they're not, uh, they don't have an impound lot. I heard well, that, yes. Be so but being that, that now becomes the problem of the, the mayor, right? Yeah. So of course, and then of course what we see, as you said, they cannibalize the car, sometimes they burn it, whatever, and ultimately it becomes our problem. So again, mm -hmm. Uh, while we're Green. saying GPD is going to be part of the solution, they need to kind of rectify that I, I agree. portion. Again, Yahides Heights Mayor Paul McDonald rose what he called the underreported issue of violence occurring at junior and senior high schools, which some students have gone to the mayor's office to report. Moreland said schools have to start with a complaint, getting GPD involved, and prosecution in family court. He also mentioned the worry of the price of meth and dealers trying to get kids hooked. But I can tell you, there's an effort now by the drug dealers to get their next customers from these kids that are, especially the, the teenage kids. That's and right. they're being found with not only just the alcohol and the marijuana, but the actual association with meth addicts. So, and that's one of the efforts why we have the dogs. I, we pushed hard with um, Mayor Sablon yesterday to get funding for GPD. The GPD had no dogs. They had no meth detection dogs. And I've been urging the chiefs over there, take those dogs, into the schools and start looking at all those lockers because it's usually some kid that's being used as the, the distributor for some adult that's sitting outside the school to get them uh, selling these, these drugs, whether it's marijuana or whatever. The AG said he will have designated teams to address the mayor's various concerns.